Hello everyone, nice to speak with you again. Just want to make it real clear, just like I have before, I think. As a, this is a casual reading, um, casual commenting, and I like to go over a few pages so that way you may be inspired to get a copy of the book yourself. A link in the description. Um, but today we are going to be reading something called The Sword of Moses, 14th century grimoire. Uh, you know, being uh, uh, drawn back to the days of Mount Sinai, Moses himself, at least in accordance with its supposed origins, its actual creation being the 14th century. But, um, yeah, in any case, uh, I want to just get into another thing too, is uh, any kind of readings like these, you can go back and look at some of the other ones if you haven't. There's no specific order in which I'm reading these. Um, some date back 16th, some are 15th, some are 14th century. Pretty soon I'm going to start delving into some of the more modern stuff, um, something a little more current. I'll probably start getting into a little more theosophical stuff, uh, maybe some work on ideas regarding the occult, not so much just grimoires. I want to experiment with a few different types of um, reading and looking at stuff. But, um, okay, let me start with the description of the Sword of Moses. The Sword of Moses, variously dated to the 14th century or before, to perhaps the 10th, contains perhaps the most strange array of folk magic fused with Kabbalistic and angelic content ever made containing conjurations that invoke the very name of Judeo-Christian deity, it professes to allow the user control over the armies of the same god for various purposes, from protecting oneself, to securing fortune, to destroying foes. Over 100 names and forces are invoked, following the sword itself, in the form of evocation, in order to provide this power. This edition contains a full list of the magical names of the rituals themselves, and has been updated to modern English. And as I stated before on uh, the previous videos, this is the Tarl Warwick edition, also known as Sticks Hexenhammer 666. Um, you can find him on YouTube. Uh, he has his own channel there, and I'll give you a link to the book itself. I highly suggest purchasing his copies. Uh, I've done a few already, and they're very, very good. And the translations are solid. And the descriptions, as well as the forwards and introductions he produces, are great. I won't be reading that today. That's for you to enjoy when you get your own copy. Part of the reason I started with his works uh, making this channel is because I wanted to read them. So I wanted an excuse to sit down and enjoy them and, um, you know, go over them briefly with you. And then, you know, read them to my leisure at a later time. I generally read the introductions prior to starting this, so I have a little bit of an idea, but I don't read the actual contents of the grimoire until I begin recording. That makes it more fun that way. Alright, let's get started. The Sword of Moses In the name of the mighty and holy God, four angels are appointed to the sword given by the Lord the master of mysteries, and they are appointed to the law. And they see, with much penetration, the mysteries of the earth and heavens. And there are their names, and these are their names. So sorry if I butcher any of this. Skid, Uzi, Merjoyal, Merjoyal, Medrizolo, Totrisi. It's the best I could do. And over these are five others, holy and mighty, who meditate upon the mysteries of God in the world for seven hours every day, and they are appointed to millions, and to myriads of thousands of chariots, ready to do the will of their Creator. And the master of each chariot upon which they are appointed wonders and says, Is there any number of his armies? And the least of these chariots is Lord and Master many, and over there, sorry, and over these are three chiefs of the hosts of the Lord, who make every day 
all to tremble and shake his eight halls, and they have the power over every creature. Under them stands stand twice as many chariots, and the least of them is lord and master over all, and the other chiefs. And these are their names, Ashi, Trishui, Shudkia, or Shudkaya, Shudkai, I don't know. And the name of their lord and king is Yahweh, who sits and all the heavenly hosts kneel and prostrate themselves before him daily, before leaving Yahweh, who is Lord over all. And when you conjure him, he will attach himself to you, and cause the other five chiefs, and their chariots, and the lords that stand under them, to attach themselves to you, just as they, are, as they were ordered, to attach themselves to Moses, son of Amram, and to attach himself all the lords that stand under them. And they will not tarry in their obedience obeisance ob and I, unless this is a word i'm familiar with let me see it's spelled according to this o yeah okay obc obeisance saints <laughs> well in any case it means deferential respect they pay obey obeisance to the prince so, all right it's a gesture and expression you learn a new word every day and will not withhold from giving authority to the man who utters the conjuration over the sword its mysteries and its hidden powers its glory and might and they will not refuse to do it as it is the command of god yahweh saying ye shall not refuse to obey a mortal who conjures you nor should you be different to him from what you were to moses son of amram when you were commanded to do so for he is conjuring you with my ineffable names, and you render honor to my name and not to him. If you should refuse, I will burn you, for you have not honored me. Seems a little insecure. Each of these angels had communicated to Moses a proprietous thing for the proper time. These names are all words of the living God and King of the universe. And they said to him, if thou wishest to use this sword and to transmit it to the following generations, know that the man who decided to use it must first free himself three days previously from accidental pollution and from everything unclean, eat and drink once every evening, and must eat the bread from pure man, or wash his hands first with brine and drink only water. And no one is to know that he intends by using this sword, as therein are the mysteries of the universe, and they are practiced only in secret, and are not communicated but to the chaste and pure. On the first day when you retire to rest, you must bathe once and no more, and pray three times daily, and after each prayer recite the following blessing. Blessed are you, Yahweh, O Lord Ki God, King of the universe, who opens the gates of the east, and cleaves the windows of the firmament of the orient, and gives light to the whole world and its inhabitants with the multitude of his mercies, with his mysteries and secrets, and teaches the people in Israel your secrets and mysteries, and has to reveal to them the sword used by the world. And you say to them, if anyone is dexterous of using this sword, by which every wish is fulfilled and every secret revealed, and every miracle marvel and prodigy are performed, then speak to me in the following manner. Read before me this and that, and conjure in such a manner, and I will instantly be prevailed upon and be well disposed toward you. And I will give you authority over the sword, by which to fulfill all that you desire, and the chiefs will be prevailed upon you. My holy ones will be well blessed towards you, and they will fulfill instantly your wishes, and will deliver to you my secrets and reveal to you my mysteries and my words they will teach you, and my wonders they will manifest to you. And they will listen and serve you as a pupil his master, and your eyes will be illuminated, and your heart will see and behold all that is hidden, and your size will be increased. Unto you I call, Sukim, Lord of the universe, you are he who is called, here we go, Ithgu, or Ithugu, 
king of the universe. You are called Athu, merciful king. You are called Huzg, gracious king. You are called, my god, these names, Huji, living king. You are called, all right, I'm just going to spell this one out. T-Z-H-P-R-U-H-U-H-U-H. Supruhohu, humble king. You are called, same thing but with the SP at the beginning, but everything else is the same. Righteous king. You are called Jihuhu. Hihu, Lofty King, you are called Rus Guri, Perfect King, you are called. Okay, how do you pronounce S P Q S? H P I H. Upright King, you are called Kith Githi, Glorious King, you are called Pithris Hupihu. Youthful king, you are called Robkyu Siuhi. Pleasant king, you are called Jushuhu. And you hear my prayers, or you hear all prayers, and attach to me your servants, the lords of the sword. For you are their king, and fulfill my desire, for evening is in your hands, as it is written. You open your hand and satisfy every living being with favor. So obviously I don't I don't know how to pronounce any of these names in the ones I thought I pronounced I probably didn't pronounce correctly and I'm gonna continue unable to pronounce these names but one thing is clear though if you do decide to practice or um, you know do any of these operations do a little research and find out how to appropriately say these names the last thing you want to do is do a you know a conjuration and mess up these names while you're trying to do it one at worst i mean at, at best it won't work and at worst you might piss off the wrong entity uh any if there is an associated entity to any particular name that's the last thing you need in your life all right so there are more conjurations followed by a variety of names that are insanely difficult and then I will move on past those conjurations and continue that you attach yourself to me uh, this was followed by a bunch of names and surrender the sword to me so that I may use it in according to my desire and that I find shelter under the shadow of our Lord in heaven in the glorious name the mighty awe-inspiring Yahweh the 24 letters from the crown that you deliver me unto me with this sword, the secrets from the earth and heavens, and mysteries from both earth and heaven, and my wish to be fulfilled, and my word as heard, and my prayer received through the conjuration with the ineffable name of God, which is glorified in the world, through which all the heavenly hosts are tied and bound. And this is the ineffable name Yahweh, blessed be he, that you shall not refuse me, nor hurt me, nor frighten and alarm me, and the tremendous name of your king, the terror from whom rests upon you, and who is called Okay, I wish I could show you this. It's, to me, it just looks like a bunch of H's and I's and G's strung together in a variety of ways. It, it looks like a bunch of anagrams. But um, uh, perhaps I'm just unfamiliar with these names. But there's sections in here in which it's just I H comma U H comma H I H comma. So who he ha hu ah he ah uh hu he ah uh he. I guess all of that is a single name. That is the longest name I've ever seen. Continue on. Fulfill for me everything that I have been conjuring for you, and serve me, for I have conjured you not with the name of one who is great among you, but with that of the Lord over all, whose name ties and binds and keeps and fastens all the heavenly hosts. And if you should refuse me, I will hand you over to the Lord God, and to his ineffable name, whose wrath and anger and fire are kindled, who honors his creatures with one letter of his name, and is called, followed by at least one sentence worth of 
strung together H's and I's and G's and N's and Z's. So that if you refuse, he will destroy you. And you will not be found when searched after. Oh my. And you preserve me from shortness of spirit and weakness of body in the name of etc. The guardian of Israel. Blessed are you who understands the secrets and reveals the mysteries and art king of the universe. I mean, sometimes I think some of these names, they just make them as complicated as possible to keep it as esoteric as possible. So only people that are very well studied can memorize, much less pronounce, these names that are made up of multiple words that are very similar. It's just variations of H and I and Q and Z. A voice warning heard in the heavens, the voice of the Lord of heaven, saying, I want a fast messenger for man, and if he fulfills my message, my sons will become proud of the sword, which I hand over to them, which is the head of all mysteries, of which all my seers have spoken, that thus will be word. As it is said, it is not my word like as fire, saith the Lord. That was a question. I'm not sure why it was there. Thus spoke Nininu Gisi, the Lord of heaven and earth, and I, Asi, the swift messenger, am pleased with my message and delighted with my sending, ascended before him, and the Lord of all commanded me. To be honest, um, I find it really interesting because, I mean, I, I'm not sure how aware. Okay, this is kind of like a trailing off a little bit, but. I don't know how many of you are aware of like uh, Lovecraftian uh, sort of writing or Lovecraftian horror, um, short his stories and you know H.P. Lovecraft stuff, and, and in there he often has um, you know which is more than likely gibberish, but <clears throat> you know the chanting for these elder gods and beings and so on and so forth, you know stuff like you know Ia Ia Cthulhu Fatagan and all that kind of stuff and Dagon and so on and what's interesting is i i feel like lovecraft must have gone through some of these grimoires at some point or come across some of this stuff because the writing in which is hinting and the, the weird lettering and stuff is very similar but the other thing too that's interesting is the angelic forms or angels themselves are pretty terrifying if um if you look at biblical descriptions or if you run through the Kabbalah and such. Any Anything angelic is generally a being of light and eyes and just a jumble of things that the human mind could barely, if not not comprehend at all, but it, it's very similar in that sense to Lovecraftian stuff. And so when I see some of these names and then I think about the representations of angelic figures as they're supposed to be as well as you know other entities you know of which you should not name but only because you can't say their names not necessarily because um you you shouldn't <laughs> say their names um i feel I, I feel like there has to be something there in regards to that but that's just me rambling but then again that's probably what you prefer or what you're here for right rambles um but anyway that was just completely non-secular i'll move on when the lord of all commanded me thus i i see the swift messenger went down to the earth and i said on my way where is the man who possesses all these that i should go to him and place this with him and i asked myself and thought in my heart that there is no man who would do all this that I wished, and I found none, and it was heavy unto me. And the Lord of all conjured me by his mighty right arm, and by the shining of his glory, and his glorious crown, with an oath of his mighty right arm, and he conjured me. And the Lord of all strengthened me, and I did not fall. I thus stood up, I, Asi, to put end in the possession of the desired covenant, in the name of something I can't pronounce. I mean, it, Sticks, if you're listening to this, help me out, man. How do I say something that's spelled Q-M-B-G-L-O-Q-M-H? I just... I, I do not have the tools to attempt such a thing. 
but I would like to know, and I would definitely like to know how to pronounce these things, because, uh, well, obviously, if you want to do any of these operations, you, you got to know these names. I mean, I thought they were complicated at the beginning, but no, no, no. I had no idea. So it continues uh, with more interesting names and uh, aspects about the conjuration and the humility that one must have in the face of such indescribable entities. And uh, moves on to another section that states, this is the Sword of Moses. With these your names and with the powers you possess to which there is no nowhere anything like Show me and to search for me, and bring me in to do all my bidding in the name of Yahweh. It's just the letter N. I think it's a representative of something else. Um, almost like if there was an X in place or a variable. You sacred angels, princes of the hosts of Yahweh, who stand upon the thrones, prepare for them before him to watch over and to minister to the sword, to fulfill by all that wants, by the names of the masters over all. You chiefs of all the angels in the world, and in the name of Yahweh, the Lord of heaven and earth, ministers of God the Most High, through you I see and in the world, you are lording over me and all, for the place of the master is over all. I pray of you to do everything that I am asking of you, as you have the powers to do everything in heaven and upon earth in the name of God, as it is written in the law, I am the Lord, this is my name. The Spells of the Sword of Moses. Ooh, now we can get into a little more fun. If upon a full moon a man wishes to unite a woman with a man, that they should be as one to destroy evil winds, demons, and devils, or to stop a ship, or to free a man from prison, and for every other thing, write on a red bull from Tobar, name number one. <clears throat> to break mountains and hills, to pass without becoming wet through the water, to enter the fire, to appoint and to depose kings, to blind the eyes, to stop the mouth, and to speak to the dead, or to kill the living, to bring down and to send up, and to conjure angels to hear you, and to see all the mysteries of the world, mysteries of the world. Write name number two upon the saucer of cup, a saucer of a cup, and put it on the root of a genip tree. To defend against a spirit that possesses the body, write on a plate, name number three. To defend against a fiery spir spirit, right on a plate, name number four. And I'm guessing the names it's referring to are the names in the previous section that I was unable to pronounce. Write names number four and five on the same for a spirit of lunacy. To defense against a demon, write number six against infection or shingle of shingles, write number seven. Against Quincy, say the words of name number eight over oil, roses, and put it over one's face. Now, I'm curious to what Quincy is. I feel like I've come across this. Oh, inflammation of the throat, abscess in the region, or tonsils. Okay. New word. For pains in the ear, whisper in the painful ear, name number nine. For aches in the eye, say the words of name number ten over water for three days in a row at morning and wash the eye over with it for cataracts of the same eye say the words of the name number 11 over oil of sesame and anoint the eye with, with it during seven mornings for debris in the eye say over water name number 12 and fill the eye with it for three mornings for bleeding at the scalp whisper name number 13 over the head early in the morning for three days when you wash your hands before getting out of bed. For paralysis, say seven times over a vessel full of water and seven times over sesame oil. The words of name number 14, that it should move away and leave an amen, amen, selah. And throw the pail of water over his head and anoint him with the oil. And do this for three days, then write upon an amulet with the words from I conjure you Till, Amen, Salah, and hang it around his neck. Um, let me look here real quick. So yeah, moves on to see your chest cramps, gall, liver damage, skin molting, sprains, syphilis, uh, kidney stones, bladder stones, 
Uh, miscarriages. Uh, a possessed wound. Hmm. Name number 41 for that. Camphor oil. A man who is going bald. There you go, boys. Name number 43 over nut oil and an anoint the head with it. So nut oil and number 43. Let's see here. Conjuring spirits. To remove a rich man from his riches. Say num name number 45 upon the dust of an anthill. Throw it into his face. Interesting. To heal leprosy. For diarrhea. Write name number 47 on a red copper plate and hang it around his neck. If you desire that the rain should not fall upon your garden, write out num name number 48. I like how the, um, the names are... Well, I mean, the, the spells are kind of not in any particular section or order. There's no, like, oh, here are medical ones, or here are, you know, very situational ones. It's like, no, we're going to have diarrhea, and then followed up by, you don't want it to rain on your garden. It makes kind of trying to, like, trying to locate the actual spell you're looking for kind of difficult. You just have to read through it again and um, find whatever it is you're looking for. I mean, I can't imagine having any kind of coherent appendix. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, see, if you wish to make the weather sunny, uh, whoever wishes to enter a furnace unharmed is to write name number 50. If you see a king or a ruler and wish to he follow you, take a basin of water and put it into the root of a genip, and the root of a purslane, and the root of an artichoke, and say name number 51. And place these on a fiery coals and in a white earthen vessel and throw upon the leaves of an oil. Of it, throw upon the leaves of an olive oil tree or olive tree and whatever you ask of the same he will bring to you even a familiar spirit in the form of a woman if you wish to confuse a king or ruler name number 52 removing enchantments hmm, number 53 you say it over water throw it over the enchanted ruler and write in the same name on the amulet and hang it around the neck and this also will also allow a prisoner to escape to catch fish easy, to have a woman follow you. All of these are uh, followed by name, number, fill in the gap. If you want a man to follow you, to cause a barren tree to fruit, for rot in the fruit trees, right on a potsherd, name number 58, so to deal with a sick tree. To keep a baby healthy, write on an onyx slab, name number 59, and whisper the name into its ears three times, spitting out after the whispering, then repeat them over a cup full of water seven times and give it to the child to drink. So there you go. You want to keep your baby healthy? That's the way to do it. For one bitten by a rabid dog, so it treats rabies. Mild fevers. Mm, if anyone becomes lost, he is to say name number 62 over his belt, on the front, each side, and the back of the same. So you have to essentially take off your belt and talk to it, and that should get you where you need to be with name number 62. If you want to ask anything of your neighbor and be answered truly, name number 63. If you desire that a woman is to follow you, write your name and her name with your blood upon her door and the same upon your door and repeat the words of name number 64 so let's see what more we have i'm gonna skip a couple oh if you wish to kill a man take mud from the two sides of the river and form it into the shape of a man's figure and write upon it the name of a person take seven branches from seven strong trees and make a bow from reeds with a string of horse sinew and place the image in a hollow and I won't tell you the rest, so if you ever do plan on killing a man using a spell, go ahead and buy your own copy. To send plagues, take care from seven men and put them into a new potsherd, name number 69. Uh, to send dreams to your neighbor, name number 70. If a snake should attack you, name number 71. And it will dry up and die. Well, does, well, according to this, it kills the snake, but does it help you as far as venom? It's probably a different name for that. 
stop a boat C from moving to release the boat. Oh, so you gotta stop him with 72 and then you could start it with 73. If you desire to prevent an oven or furnace or pot from becoming destroyed by heat, 74. You can heat up a pot with 75, but you have to say 74 so that it doesn't break. Oh, you can kill a lion with number 79. Let's see here. Open ooh, to open a locked door. Take the root of a lotus, place it under the tongue, and say the name of number eighty-one against the door. That's some easy unlocking. Who needs thieves' tools when you got number eighty-one? Kill an ox. Let's see here. Inflame an ox's heart. To make a man lose his senses, say name number eighty-four over an egg and place it in his hands. I guess he would do the old, hey, can you hold this? And you just drop an egg in his hand as you say name number 84. To destroy your neighbor's home, number 85. To make your neighbor disliked, take blood from a beast's lungs. Say upon it name number 87 and smear it upon his home's lintel. To make a woman have a miscarriage, ooh, that's not cool. Number 88. To know whether a man, a sick person, will die or live, say before him name number 90. If he turns his face toward you, he will live. If he, if away, he will die. Cure hemorrhoids. Antidote to poison. There. Use that. Well, that's venom, so it's a little different. Number 96, upon an egg. To protect against lightning, take a ring of iron and lead. And hang it on the spot you wish to keep safe from being struck. And say over at number 97. Interesting. Iron ring. Protect you from lightning. Of all things. To free a man from blame for his crimes. If one does not know what a man is ailing from. To heal him, soak molen in water. And say over at name number 103. This one was highlighted by previous readers. To have always light in the darkness, write number 106 upon a parchment and carry it always with you. So is that a, a philosophical, like positivity? Or is it referring to actual light in the dark room? It's interesting. So sometimes you get into like what's metaphorical and what's like literal. To, because it says to blind an eye like to blind a single eye or is it saying to make something not visible to another what is what exactly does it mean to blind the eye to summon a sword which will fight your enemies for you Ooh, that one sounds cool say name number 108 over a new knife holy forged of iron and throw it at your foe so you just gotta get a iron knife, chuck it at somebody that you're trying to hurt, and say name number 108, and it will summon a sword that will fight your enemies. If you desire that your enemies kill one another, you got 109. Ah, here we go. There's always one to be invisible to all. They love invisibility, these grimoires. Say number 112 over the skin of a lion and carry it with you. And no one will be able to see you. So you wear like a lion pelt that you anoint with name number 112. And this goes on for a while. Let's see here. Going on journey, safe journeys, um, walk on water. So that's how Christ did it. He said name number 125. Put it on his belt. Now you can walk on water without getting wet. To make another person forget things. To send evil spirits to attack your neighbor. To bind thieves and burglars. To guard a house. For every other thing that has not been mentioned. Say name number 136 to the end of, this, of the sword. Fascinating, right? So if it's not covered here, they got a caveat. They got a way. And this this will cover the rest of them. Like I was just stuck in between. Um... Ah, oh, I see. You have to wear an amulet in association with it. That is followed by an appendix. 
which discusses more interesting names and more honoraries of individual angels and information regarding them, their powers, their fortifications and strengths, and more invocations. And last but not least, the following list those names which are used within the context of specific rituals aforementioned in order. Uh, okay, so the names that you need in order to do what you need to do are mentioned in order right here. And uh, many of which I, I don't think are meant to be said aloud, honestly, but they require you to. So... If one can tell me how to pronounce W Z W R W W S as a single word or name that I can pronounce upon, say, a cup of water or whatever it is it needs me to do, inform me. Leave something in the comments because I cannot pronounce that for the life of me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Have a great evening or whatever it is you may be doing. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, if there's any occult lit grimoires or otherwise, doesn't matter what it is. Any, even if it's um, theory, occult theory, things like that. Anything you want me to look over or read that might be interesting to others, make a suggestion in the comments. I would love to have more options and ideas for what to read next. I want to start kind of moving away from some of these older grimoires. I'll go back to it, but just just to try something else, keep things fresh. Thank you.